friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Automation Engineer. We are in chapter 6 now and we will be covering these four topics as a part of this particular chapter about transitioning between manual testing to automation test. So generally it's a very important aspect to understand that how a manual testing organization can adopt uh, automation tests and automation tools and what are the several things which would be required to be taken into consideration before switching to automation. So to begin with the very first topic is criteria for automations. What are the major criteria to be considered for an organization to adopt automation? Getting started with this is to understand what are the several criteria. Of course, right from the foundation, we have understood a lot about what are the several factors to be considered by an organization before switching into automation or adapting automation for the first time. There are several parameters to be taken into consideration, broadly talking to uh, the uh, adapting the organization uh, maturity of the process and maybe also understanding how much manual actually we are doing and what's the need of automation are we quite often trying to repeat the test or is there any such parameter which uh, manually could be complex to handle or maybe taking uh, more time or complicated to even conduct so there are several reasons like that if we talk in more detail we can actually get into the understanding of each and every single parameter to see what exactly are the criteria which could be important for us? So here is a list of uh, the major criteria which we would be talking in this particular topic. That is 6.1 criteria for automation, like frequency of use, complexity to automate, compatibility of tool support, maturity of test process, suitability of automation, uh, sustainability of the automation environment, controllability of SUT. And it's not limited to this. Of course, we do have many other factors which we'll be talking in this particular segment. So this is just the part one and we'll be getting to the part two as well to cover all the criteria which we need to know. To begin with, the very first thing we are talking about is frequency of use, which generally means that how frequently a, a particular test is being executed and how often you try to execute a test which is more in terms of like repeatability. In terms of repeatability, we talk about repeating a particular test again and again. So say generally you talk about the environment of sprints uh, in Agile and you want to uh, have continuous integration every time you create a new piece of code. And of course, it would require the previous test to be executed quite often. So of course, the condition of the repeatability is very important here and that could invite the automation. So we need to actually understand based on this criteria that is that a need of repeatability is high or low. If it is low, you can go ahead with manual because automation is not just going to be simply considered for an organization. It would invite an additional cost. It would invite internal ramp ups and a lot of other modifications in the process entirely altogether to actually address all the queries. So it's also important that what kind of return on investment you will be expecting from the automated environment which you will be implementing to work as a part of your entire test. So frequency of use is one of the important criteria to be considered at this point of time. The second parameter is about complexity to automate. Sometimes it is possible that some of the test cases are so complex uh, to handle manually or maybe time consuming or maybe difficult to be organized. Say when you talk about uh, executing something like a uh, heavy uh, keyword driven frameworks kind of concept. So to do that manually, to pick up a test from the test suite out of 100 test cases and to determine randomly executing them could be quite hectic and time consuming and probably error prone as well. Now, when you consider these factors, which actually makes the side of manual testing heavier compared to the cost or maybe the ramp up involved in the automation, you do that balancing. And if the automation finds to be lighter than the manual testing weight, of course, you, would, you can very well go for automation. But again, we will be talking about several other criteria which will be helpful to make you understand that how automation can be considered no matter your manual testing is heavily weighing. Further, the next criteria we're talking about is compatibility and the tool support as well. 
Now, when you talk about, there is a wide range of development platform used to create applications. We have different languages, we have different platforms, we have different supporting and third-party softwares and several other things which could be a parameter to consider when you talk about automation. The challenge to the tester is to know what available test tool exists to support any given platform and to what extent the platform is supported. So probably uh, if you have several tools in the market, but your application is something which a single tool cannot address. So every tool has a different capability and of course that compatibility will not be suitable for you. So you need to understand what tool you already have. There could be some open source tool, there could be in-house custom built tools or probably commercial tools. So we need to actually put them in three different columns and put out the uh, various properties of that and see which could be the best thing to be used at that point of time for you. So compatibility and tool support would be important aspects to be considered. On the other side, we of course talk about the maturity of the test process, what your organization is currently having. When you talk about the different levels of maturity like CMMI, PMMI, or you follow CTP, or several other models of maturity, you, you realize that how mature your process is to adopt automation. Because here, at this point of time, we understand that the tool which you are going to use will not change for you. It's only you who has to update or degrade to fit the use of the tool. Generally, it's not degrade, but always upgrade to meet the expectation of the tool because tool is rigid and fixed. It, it is just going to follow what it is supposed to follow. And you need to actually adapt yourself to the behavior of meeting the criteria of the tool. So it is really important to determine what your maturity of the process within your organization is. On the other side, we do have suitability of the automation for the stage of the software product lifecycle. And here we're talking about suitability. How suitable is automation for the stage? For example, an SUT has a product lifecycle which can span for years or decades. You might be working on a very lengthy project. And of course, as the development of the system begins, the system changes and expands to address defects and add refinement to meet the end user expectations. So in early stages of a system development, changes may be too rapid to implement an automated testing solution. So is that your tool is going to be, or your team will be capable of coping up those frequent changes, or your script is need to be updated or maintained quite frequently? So if the things change such a high level of frequency, then whether your tool will be really helpful to you at that point of time or not. So we need to actually consider different factors, different criteria before just going for automation, considering that automation is fast, automation helps you to repeat tests, or automation is simple and easy. There are several other things which can actually blow your mind to understand the automation is not so easy to implement. The next thing is sustainability of the environment. Stability, sustainability of an environment is pretty important. A test environment for automation needs to be flexible and adaptable to the changes that will occur to the SUT over time. You set up a criteria, you set up an environment, and tomorrow your SUT can be updated further in different terms. Now, whatever test you prepared for the release one could probably be no longer useful in a new environment which is SUT is using now. So we need to also take into consideration such things like it includes uh, ability to rapidly diagnose correct problems with automation, the ease with which the automation components can be maintained, and the facility with which the new features and support can be added into automated environments. So as we talk about all these factors, sustainability could be really important about the environments when talking about adopting or implementing automation at organizational level. Next thing is controllability of the SUT, including preconditions, setup, and stability, and several other factors. It is important for the test automation engineer to identify control and visibility characteristics in the SUT that will aid in the creation of effective automated test. Otherwise, the test automation relies on UI interactions only, resulting in less maintainable test automation solutions. So there are a lot of things when you talk about what could be the preconditions, what are the time or factors required for the setting up of the automation tests and several other things. At the end, we are talking about technical planning in support of ROI analysis. So technical planning is equally important. Of course, you need to understand that what other factors, what other setup, what your uh, environment of like the automation solution would be required to be adapted by the organization to uh, actually 
uh, bring a new tool to the organization or introduce a tool into the organization. Technical planning in support of ROI analysis is also important. Test automation can actually provide varying degrees of benefit to the test team. However, a significant level of effort and cost is associated with the implementation of an effective automated testing solution. So in addition to that, to adequately prepare for transitioning to an automated environment, there are several areas which need to be addressed. So here are a few of the things which you can see, like availability of the tools in the test environment for test automation, correctness of the test data and test cases, scope of the test automation effort, education of the test team to paradigm the shift, rules, roles and responsibility, cooperation between the development team and the test automation engineers, parallel effort, which is simultaneous and synchronized, test automation reporting is equally important so that we can actually find out whether the automation is helpful for us or not. So these are several things which you're talking as a part of criteria, but these are not the all. We do have remaining some of the criteria which we'll be talking about in next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. So in this tutorial, this is what we're talking about. We'll be coming back to you with the rest of the criteria of the automation. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them all. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.